Hello and welcome to the Gothic Unicorn. Today I'm going to be back working on the 112 scale doll's house. Now this has been sadly neglected for quite a while. In part because obviously I've been doing decorations for Halloween and for Christmas but also because well other things have got on top of me and I haven't really been able to focus but I want to get some progress done which means going back to the attic which is obviously the room I was working on last. Now at the moment I'm still waiting on um, work to be done on the lights. Hopefully by the time this video goes up there will be some progress but we shall see. Anyway, because I don't want to really get started on the inside until I know I haven't got to keep taking things out, I'm going to make something to go into my attic today. And um, hopefully you're going to enjoy it. For today's project, I'm going to be using my favourite, which is um, food packaging. This is part of a cereal box and um, I'm going to be using this and to be quite frank, probably a bit more as well, because I'm going to need more than one layer for what I'm going to make. And um, we don't like to um, skimp on materials when it's something that's free. Well, it's going to go into the recycling, so I might as well reuse it and then just put the scraps in the recycling bag. I'm actually going to be making today a um, screen. Now this is something that can be used as a room divider or it can be used as a privacy screen but I'm going to be making one that's going to have been um, sort of abandoned in the attic a bit. I made one ages ago for my witch's cottage but I didn't film it then, I wasn't on YouTube at the time and I decided that it's something that I'd like to revisit and I'm going to make it a little more... Um, finessed than my um, original piece. So we're going to start off with this and um, I'm going to go and figure out how big I need it to be. I've got Grandmama here as my Andy um, model. One day she will get a makeover. I will sum up the courage to do something with her even if it is only replacing this awful floral dress with something a little bit more witchy um, but to be fair she needs some work underneath her dress because she's rather um, lacking her legs are uneven and things like that but she was cheap and um, I always knew I was going to have to do some work on her but I'm going to use Grandmama to figure out how tall, how wide I want it and then figure out how big my pieces need to be. I have had my paper cutter out. Um, I've used this for cutting um, regular shapes, particularly squares and rectangles, because it's easier and I've got it and I might as well use it. Um, I decided to go with a um, two inch by five inch rectangle, which means that if Grandmama is stood behind it, just the top of her hair would be sticking out. And I figured that was a reasonable height for a privacy screen. If you want it taller, you can make it taller or you can add some legs to it with some beads or blocks or something. Um, some little pieces of a square um, wooden strip would be great. This is just all in keeping with how they are in real life. So what I've done is I've actually cut six pieces. I have cut two for each panel. I have cut some black card. This is some cardstock that I had for crafting and I've done this because my original one that's in my witch's cottage and is much smaller. I painted a um, white design on the black and I like it and I think I'm going to replicate it 
on these. Not exactly the same, I'm going to do something similar um, with a central design and then a board around it. And finally, I've cut some pieces for inches. Now you can inch this with fabric, you can use um, a ribbon or like a, um, a tape, a fabric tape. I'm just going to use some card because I think I may, may, when it comes down to it, actually um, decide to stick it in place. But I'm going to put some card inches in to start off with just so that I can actually manoeuvre it and get it into a position that I like when I'm actually filling the room. So I'm going to clear my desk off again and then we're going to look at how we're going to decorate the other side. When I did my smaller version I covered the reverse side with some felt. Felt is great because I was working at a smaller scale. It's somewhere between 1 16th and 1 24th because it was done for those little critter creatures um, and um, I did everything pretty much by eye not by scale so I used felt because it meant I didn't have to worry about um, yeah frayed edges and that sort of thing I used a lot of felt in that because it was just really easy for the fabric side of things. Now I want to do a fabric reverse or it could be the right side, it depends on your point of view. And I'm thinking I'm going to use this green um, velvet. Now this is a man-made fibre which isn't ideal for miniature but I figure that because it's not going to be draping or anything like that I can get away with it. Instead I am just going to cover the one side of it with this and um, hopefully have a nice effect to it. It certainly looks good on the camera although the colour isn't quite accurate because it looks brighter and slightly bluer than it is. It's actually a really um, green green, sort of a bottle green dare, dare I say. So I'm going to find my fabric scissors and I'm going to um, have a go at covering these. To cover what will be my reverse panels, I'm starting by using some um, double-sided tape on the one side. Now this is um, extra strong double-sided tape. This is a craft product and it's something that I've used for a good many years with paper craft. Um, it's great, it sticks most things and it stays stuck. This isn't your ordinary double-sided tape. So what I've done is I've put four pieces around the outside because I want something to keep the fabric in place on the visible side. I don't want to use glue because um, it's going to come through. It doesn't matter what I use, it will come through and it would look a bit messy. So. I'm just using that and I am going to stick this onto there. I'm going to turn it over and just make sure that there's no big wrinkles or anything on this side. Now you could at this stage if you wanted add um, some um, tufting. You could have put a bit of felt or something underneath to cushion this. If you wanted this to be your um, more obvious side I would recommend that you put some felt on to give it a bit of padding, maybe a little bit of um, the quilting, is it quilt batting, that stuff and then you would at this stage you would tuft it from this side through to the back I don't want to do that because, as I say, this is going to be my back. It's going to look quite nice, I think, judging by the pieces that I've done, but it's going to be my um, less obvious side. At this stage, I could change my mind, but that is how I'm looking at it. So that is stuck down, and what I'm going to do is I am going to cut off the corners. Now, you do need to get a good... 
um, amount of the corner cut off. I've actually tried this, I've done the other two panels already and um, this is the best way to do it. I did it. I did the first one really messed up. Now I'll just get rid of those so they don't get stuck to anything and I'll put that back down. Now I've got my glue. You can use whatever glue you like. If you want to use a glue that is good for fabric buying, I'm using my Cosmic Acrylic glue because it's what I like using. And I'm using it out of the bottle, which is unusual. I normally use it on a bit of card with some um, toothpicks to spread it. But at the moment, this is working better. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my edge round onto the glue and I'm going to yeah, be happy with that. Now I repeat this for the second long side. This is what's worked for me. You may decide to do it differently. You know, everybody has their own, what's it in miniatures, has their own preferences. And of course this one isn't going to glue quite so well. What I will do with this one is I will get some clothes pegs and I will just get it flat and hold it in place. Now I'm going to leave this to, um, to take and then I'm going to come back and we'll do the other ends. Now I have found that when I do the smaller ends I definitely have to use the clothes pins. I have to pin it in place and leave it until it's dried but a bit of drying time isn't the end of the world. I'm going to do the top now and again I'm going to put my bit of glue on there. Now I'm going to do the glue at the other end as well because this glue is better if it's used when it's tacky and if I just give it a few seconds it will actually um, stick a bit better. So again I'm folding this over and as I expected because it has done on the others it's not altogether plain ball so we'll get the clothes pegs out again and then I'll repeat at the bottom end. Just hold that in place with my thumb while I get the, get the pinned. So that I'm going to put aside to dry off but I can show you the the ones that I've done which have got a nice covering. You can sort of see where the glue is on that one. I don't mind. As I say, it's not my um, preferred face. This is going to be the rear that there will probably maybe be one of them that you can see a bit of it from a certain angle. So I'm going to let the um, other one dry and um, we're going to move on to the next step. Next, I am going to stick the other piece of cereal box onto the back of this. Now, what I've done with this is I've been around the edge of it with some black paint and I've just gone over the edge of that bit with some black paint. Now, I've got a few blue bits coming through in the corners. I'm going to have to go back with a brush and put some paint in. What I've done is I've put some of the extra strong double-sided tape around the outside of this piece and the inside of that piece and all I'm going to do now is I'm going to put glue over the top. Now the using glue with double sided tape is something that is quite often used in paper crafting because the glue means that the double sided tape doesn't quite take straight off. So I'm going to go and get those into the corners and I've got another blue corner showing but a ho we can fix that and I will push this together. Now I'm going to put close pins onto, onto the corners I think just to keep it down and then I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to work on the, um, 
the painted side. That's going to be my next bit. So while this lot dries, I'm going to do some painting. I have decorated the um, front of my screen. Now I've chosen to replicate the kind of folksy design that I did on my original piece from the Witch's Cottage, which is a triple moon um, sort of symbol and then a board around it. I went with this because it's a pattern that I actually quite like. I like how it looks in my other house and I've decided to go for it again. To make life easier, because I've got three individual pieces, I've stuck it together on the back with some scotch tape. Now the scotch tape should come off without too much damage, but I will peel that off off camera because I think it's going to be a bit of a pain. Um, I used a um, Posca paint pen to do this. I sketched everything out with pencil, my straight lines, the outlines of the moons I all did with the pencil and then I went over it. Um, it just makes it easier. You can obviously do any kind of pattern that you want. You're only um, constrained by your imagination. You can find something on the internet and then sketch it out in pencil and then go over it in ink or paint as I did. You could use ink, you could use a gel pen if you wanted white and you haven't got a white um, um, paint marker. Would work, would work very well. But basically that gives you your um, basic screen design. As I say, as complicated or as simple as you like. I've gone fairly simple. Now I've made my inges out of the smaller offcuts of cardstock that I um, prepared earlier. Now, I did three. Without thinking, I did three. I've got three panels, I did three. I only need two. Hopefully, you'll be a bit more on the ball and not waste your time cutting things that you don't need. And what I've done is I've actually scored, it's not quite in the middle, on the cardstock. And what I've done is it obviously gives me a peak and a um, valley. The first one I've attached and I've got the, the valley pointing towards the back. This one, I'm going to do it the other way around. I'm going to attach it like so, so that when I um, put it all together, I can get it on a bit of an angle. So it's actually um, zigzag not all sort of folding in one way or folding out the other. These, you can actually use these cardboard inches and sort of twist it a little bit so it goes the other way. Um, not so much in this because obviously my fabric on the other side is quite thick. If you just put something flat on there, if you'd decoupaged one side, if you'd put a panel, a paneling effect, something like that, it'll work a bit better. But as I say, this is eventually going to be stuck in one position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my bit of an inch here and I'm going to put a reasonable but not over the top amount of glue on it on both sides like so. Now it seems like a lot but and then I'm going to make sure that these two are level. And I'm going to stick one piece onto there and the other piece onto there. And just push it down a bit. Not worrying about the glue oozing out because that's going to be covered shortly. But when it stands up, I will be able to get it at a bit of an angle like that. And you're still going to be able to see around it a little bit of the green. Depending on how I put it, you might see more of it. But um, again, I was moved because I tried to show it off too soon. I will just put that back in place and I will now let it dry before I do anything else. The final step is obviously to stick the um, painted panels into place. And I'm again using some of the tape 
and some glue over the top, just a small amount of the glue over the tape so that it should give me a moment to um, stick it down. And now my glue doesn't want to work. This is why I normally use it on um, a nice bit of card because that way I don't have to fight with it. And all I'm going to do is I just brought it forward because I want to try and line it up with the piece underneath, like so. Now I'm going to repeat this for the other two panels and then I'll show you the final result. And here we have it my finished screen with my um, and drawn folk art design on one side and my luxurious velvet on the other. Now with this velvet and how I've done it I could have that perfectly positioned in any room it would look brilliantly. A little bit of glue that hasn't quite dried there but I just wanted to get this shown off. It's a problem with filming it. I want to get it done now. If I was doing this myself, it probably would have took twice as long because I wouldn't have been so worried about drying time. But anyway, um, I've got myself a screen and it will stand up quite nicely. It give a little bit of um, shape, can hide some things, what have you. It'll look pretty good in my room, I think. If you fancy the idea of a screen but you don't want to actually make one you can buy screens ready made you can buy screens ready made that are um, like unfinished wood ready for you to finish off yourself with decoupage with paint with fabric whatever it is or of course you can buy some really nice pieces that aren't that expensive that are ready made but there's certainly something to be said for making it yourself, especially when you don't have to buy anything to make it, which is what I've done here. Everything here came out of my craft room. So that is a winner of a piece as far as I'm concerned. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you um, like my little um, witchy inspired screen. Um, if you have, please like, comment and subscribe and until next time, bye.